Hello Vicksburg, this is South Ward Alderman Willis Thompson here at our water plant. Just left a tour with uh, the mayor flags and uh, Alderman Mayfield and what we wanted to do was just take a tour of the facility and look at some of the upgrades that have been made and just kind of let the viewing public know some of the things that go into running this water plant. The water plant is a 24-hour operation. This is 24-7, 365. Right, yes, I mean, sir. You're never free of operating this. You know, you can't just say, well, we're going to take a day off and so on. This is 24-7, 365. We went through every step it takes uh, to keep our water purified. Uh, what most people might not be aware of, that every ounce of water that comes through this city have to first circulate through this plant to be purified. When the water comes from the wells, the first thing it goes to is an aerator. Mm -hmm. And in that aerator, we take off carbon dioxide, we take out iron. That's why if you look, a lot of things brown, mm -hmm. that's the iron that we're removing mm -hmm. from the water. So, uh, and anything else, any other iron is taken out in the softeners also, mm -hmm. and then filtered out. Well, how often do you have to do that? I mean, is that an everyday thing you have to It's continual. Continual. It's just like okay. our chlorine. It, all the water goes to the aerators. Mm -hmm. Nothing goes beyond the aerators. It comes through the aerators mm -hmm. and then comes through the softeners to here. Mm -hmm. And everything is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we talked about things such as boil water notices, uh, when we issue a notice, how much time do we have between a notice, and what steps are taken to lift the notice. Water could be contaminated. I know it's a level of chlorine in the water that protects it, but for how, what's that window? Um, Usually, if we get a positive bacteria, it's going to be 24 hours after we take the test. If we take a test, it takes 24 hours to run the analysis. So you can really figure 26 hours maybe by the time we collect it, by the time they put it up, run it, and read it. So 24 to 26 hours in that area. Um, then they notify us and then we immediately issue the boil water as fast as we can if it's a positive cold form. If it's just loss of pressure, we sit there and watch when it goes down. We still have chlorine in the water, but it's chlorine in any water we got out there at about two parts per million. Mm -hmm. um, so it was still safe, and then when we lost pressure, we just issued the boil water, brought it back up, checked the chlorine again, got back to about two, wound up with zero positive bacteria. so therefore out of all those tests, everything was good. But we went out for two days and did that. And most of the time we're taking precautionary measures with boil water notices, because, and the reason I say that, because if you issue a notice at 8, 9 a.m., and, and somebody don't get it to noon, right and they drink the water or use the water, you know, I've gotten calls saying, well, the notice was issued, I didn't get it in time, something may happen, I drank the water, but... Um, but once you get an incident, you have 24 hours to issue that boiled water. Right. When we lose 20 pounds of water, we have to issue a boiled water notice, and we do have enough chlorine in the water to protect us until the issue is addressed and taken care of. We keep chlorine in the water 24 right. hours a day, seven days a week. Right. And just because we issue a boil water does not mean that you're going to get sick. Right. Okay, because right. the chlorine's out there taking care of the bacteria, mm -hmm. and we're just doing to make sure and ensure public health. That is the mm -hmm. bottom line of this right. plan. If something happened just on the edge of town here, where which is pretty much a mile or so from where I live, now Alderman Thompson is 10 miles away. If you do a boil water, would that affect him also or just affect a, a do, do, do you? It, it, it could, but probably not. I mean, we can issue the boil water for a specific area. Okay. Um, if we know one of the high hills is going to be out because we're going to have some work done on a tank mm -hmm. or done on a main or uh, replacing a fire hydrant, which would happen, I believe, last week. Right. We can issue a boil water, like say, okay, from street to street to street to street, say, in this area, because you're in an elevation, mm -hmm. you know, that, hey, we know we're going to be low here. Just go ahead and do a precautionary boil water. That way we're protecting the health. Bottom line is we're here to protect the health of the people and we're not going to let that be compromised in any way. Mm. Okay. All right, let's keep a little bit more. Sure. <laughs> this is the filter gallery. Uh, this plant is somewhat of a specialized plant. It is a lime softening plant. Uh, your water is extremely hard in the wells, and hardness uh, is on a scale of one from zero to 100, normally with 100 being hard. Uh, your water comes to us from the wells between 225 and 450. 
So you're all the way out off the scale on hardness. Our job is to take the pH up to about a 10 and a half and the softeners out back. Uh, we use quick lime. Uh, quick lime is a, a lime that is non-hydrated. It's just a regular dry lime. And then we put it with water and run it through the slakers. Uh, then make it into a hydrated lime. Using that, we take the pH up to 10, 3, 10, 5. Bring it back in from the uh, softeners to a recarb area at this end down here. We put uh, carbon dioxide into the water, trying to drive the pH back down with carbonic acid. And taking that back down causes the calcium to come out of the water. It precipitates, and when it precipitates, we filter it to make sure nothing gets by. Mm. So then when we filter it, after that, the pH is gonna be in the neighborhood of eight and eight, nine oh maybe. Mm. Uh, hardness will range between 50 and 80. So we've taken it from the mid 200s, 300s, down to 50 to 80, which is considered a moderate water. And most folks like it. You can get a good lather up. Right. But at the same time, you get clean when you rinse. Right. And that's the big thing, is if it's really hard, you can't get a lather, but you're really squeaky clean. But if it's real soft, a little bit of soap goes a long way, and mm -hmm. you never get it off your body. And, and the water plant operator discussed some of those things also, which I think is very uh, useful information uh, when it comes to the purification of our water system. Yes, sir. This is a model of the filters that we have that are here at the plant. Mm -hmm. It starts off with a tile under the drain system. Mm -hmm. The water, as you can see, the little holes. The mm -hmm. water comes down, goes through the holes, and comes out the bigger holes and goes on into the clear well. Mm -hmm. You have the different grades of gravel, then you have pea gravel, mm -hmm. then you have sand and anthracite. Okay. And it all works together to filter everything out of the water. All right, so this start out catching you bigger, then this gets that, this gets the next level, this gets here, and the finer it gets, the cleaner your water is going to be when it comes Yes, up. sir, because it goes down and leaves everything now, else this on the is top. A tar like uh, it's, uh, it's, it's cold. It's cold. It is cold. It is cold. It okay. Is cold. okay. So it's just, it's just powder well, once cold. Once it goes through there, it ought to be ready. Uh, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it, hope between so. there getting all the way down, it should be good to go. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about water heaters while we're there. Um, you know, everything will settle in the bottom of that water. Exactly. You heat that water up, you've mm -hmm. changed my water. My water is no longer the same. You've heated it up, therefore it's mm -hmm. going to act different to calcium mm -hmm. and everything else. And it'll have a tendency to settle stuff out in the bottom of that heater. Mm -hmm. If you'll take a mayonnaise jar about once a month, mm -hmm. go in there and open yeah, up that little bottom closet, mm -hmm. it'll clean it out and you keep it out that way, mm -hmm. you get more efficient hot water heaters, okay. and you don't have a problem with sure you catch up. that now. Because, you know, I've seen a lot of them, not as much in the city limits, but I've seen a lot of them where you can take that bottom element out uh, and it's just literally carbon that has built up and it even beads itself and you can just continually flow it out. Yes, sir. And sometimes you might have a bucket like that for it. Now, it doesn't happen overnight. No, sir, but if you'll do it once a month, you'll keep that, month. that down. Mm -hmm. so. That's good. Yes, sir. That's good. Well, I learned something today for sure. This is very important. We just spent about $2 million uh, on a clarifier. We need another clarifier. But these kind of upgrades are necessary to ensure that you, the public, have clean, purified, uh, safe drinking water.